I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm fixing something no one's gonna even notice except me. That's why my mic was coming out of the left speaker only. I just wanna get the arrow to point at the same spot while the screen moves, please. An easy way to tell if you did it wrong is if you dash diagonally down into the spikes. Uh, of course you're gonna know you did it wrong. It will sound perfectly fine on my cans. On a stereo or sound system, barely perceptible or way too loud. What even is this video? Well, the fun thing about arriving late to the Celeste modding party is that Strawberry Jam was only two weeks away from when I started playing. And everyone else has been waiting two years. Well, this is stunning. This is huge. I love there's a world map. Hello, crab. <gasps> oh, oh, we're friends now. It's you and me, bud. Suspicious platform. You wait here. Hello. Gorgeous. Rose garden. Oh, I love the little indicator for when you should throw it. I appreciate that this music is a nod or inspired by the Mario Galaxy Gusty Gardens. It really does sell the feeling of flying through a garden. Fun. Mm, I'm gonna have to leave you here while I go up. So you just have fun. Bouncing around there. Yeah, we're good. To rehive. As always, the decorations on point. We are bouncing. That's not in vanilla. Yes, please. I'm so impressed. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Bouncing's a thing. Okay, that's just fun. Incredible design. Wait. My map goes further to the left. Oh. Krabby? <laughs> it appears you have a purpose in life. <laughs> Potential for anything. It reminds me, one of the titles of a song from the VVV, VVV? The soundtrack? It's VVV! Oh, let's go. Some of these rooms are straight up recreations. Strawberries. Now remember, strawberries are entirely optional and you don't get anything for collecting them. Therefore, it is imperative that we go for all strawberries. Left is always right, left is always right. Yes. In VVV, there was always these random numbers or icons that would serve as enemies. Don't you love cycles? This room is exactly the same. Oh wait, we have to try. <laughs> Hi, buddy. It's a puzzle map, of course. Yay, a puzzle map. Great. Yes, great, thank you. <laughs> you see that tight gap in the spike? It's pixel perfect. All right, so we gotta set up blocks. That's not the spirit of the map. 
I see. Well, GG's boys, we solved the puzzle. Nice, next puzzle solved. These are pixel perfect, right? Yeah, pixel perfect, good, okay. Nice. Sweet, that was a good puzzle. Ooh, that was a good one, I like that one. Oh, we're actually gonna have to solve this one? Oh, just kidding. We don't have to solve it. I hate puzzle maps. Gift from the stars. Oh, are you telling me I found the two puzzle maps out of 21? Yep. Well, there is bubbles and a duck. <laughs> Blue springs do not give your dash back. Wow, the level is so readable. Straight through the spikes, down right. Hopefully that crystal will respawn. It does. Genius. Oh, cool. What a level. Grab the double dash crystal. Spring. Move to the left to preserve the dash. Back to the right. We're out of dashes. Ah, uh, but we'll wall climb. Yep, that's it. That was the intended solution. Oh right, I tried this one on my laptop keyboard. That did not go well. With the jam. That changes things. Clever, you have to use the edge of the screen to bounce the block up. Budget limitations, yeah. This music sure is a jam. Okay, I'm leaving now. But we got the jam. Super jump, dash and jump at the same time. Hypers, down diagonal, dash and jump. Supers give more height, but hypers give greater distance. You can extend both the super and the hyper by slightly delaying the jump input. A good indicator is waiting until her hair turns white to jump. These extended variants provide a mid-air dash, but you do need a large enough piece of ground to perform them. Wave dash, dash down diagonal from the air, then jump when you touch the ground. Mid-air supers, dash near a narrow piece of terrain, then jump when you're over it. To perform a wall bounce, dash straight up near a wall, and press jump during the dash animation. Dream jumps. Simply jump as you're leaving the dream block. Dream grab, hold grab, and a directional input in the opposite direction you're traveling. Neutral drops allow you to gain height with throwable objects. Pick up a thrown object, hold down, and let go of grab, then dash back up and re-grab the thrown object. Corner boosts are performed by holding grab and dashing toward the top half of the tile. Then press jump slightly before you would hit the block. When you're leaving a dream block, the game treats you as on the ground for four frames. So you can actually input a hyper during this window to hyper out of the dream block. Input buffering is sort of leniency mechanic designed to make the game feel like it doesn't unfairly eat your inputs. You can press buttons slightly early and still receive whatever behavior you wanted from the input. So for example, we could hold jump slightly before touching the ground and then we'll still jump upon landing. 
Water is weird. If there's an obstacle in the water, you can actually buffer jumps off of the surface. Whereas uh, normal, you can also jump on every frame while on top of water. And this gains speed. So here we'll perform a hyper and then we'll press jump as many times as possible. And I actually have two jump keys bound, so this makes it easier. And in case it hasn't been mentioned before, Theo crystals cannot pass through this barrier and jellyfish are destroyed when passing through. So a lot of times a level will require you to throw your jellyfish through gaps in these barriers. Neutral jumps allow you to gain height on walls without using stamina, or gain height on walls that you normally couldn't grab. To perform a neutral jump, jump without pressing a horizontal input, and after the jump, move back to the wall, and then repeat that pattern. Concepts of neutral drops and neutral climbs. So we'll call this a jelly neutral. So we'll press ourselves up against a wall, hold the jellyfish, perform a neutral drop, which is done by holding down and then releasing grab. Then we'll do a neutral jump, then we'll move back towards the wall and then grab the jelly. Yes, it's painful. Reverse hypers can be performed on small platforms with a wall on one side, allows us to extend the hyper where it would otherwise be impossible. Hyper bunny hops are done by performing a short hyper, which is just a hyper, but letting go of the jump button right away. And then when you land, do a full height jump. What this does is it combines the speed of a hyper with the height of a normal jump. Every time you jump off a moving block, its speed is added to yours. So if we perform a hyper bunny hop off of this moving block, you get boosted twice. If you jump or dash within nine frames of leaving a moving block, you'll get the additional speed boost. So here, we're gonna jump off of the moving block within nine frames and then immediately dash right. So we'll be faster and then we'll hang on to this jellyfish to preserve our speed. Revisiting corner boost. So it's possible to corner boost off of corners with spikes on them. Now in this example, the, the red bubble is exactly lined up. Corner boosts can also be done without dashing. In this case, we're going to wave dash out of the bubble and then corner boost off of the block. So we'll press jump after we wave dash and then we'll press jump again right when we're by the corner. Corner jumps allow you to buffer jumps off of the corners of even spiked blocks. In this case, the wall is perfectly lined up with the corner of the spike, so we just buffer a jump. This technique is called five jump, which is when you reach the top of a wall and you perform Climb jump and then immediately buffer a jump and you'll be able to cover a greater distance. You can also neutral to the top of this wall instead of using stamina to climb up. We had touched on dream hypers briefly before, but let's introduce some more tech. If we're moving through a dream block and we exit from the top or bottom, we can dream hyper in either direction. So we can either perform a reverse or a regular dream hyper. Let's talk about contraband. So we can smuggle jellyfish into dream blocks. And it's possible if we grab the jellyfish when we're close enough to the dream block and then dash. And we can also dream jump out of this while holding on to the jellyfish. Okay, these are tough. So they're fundamentally a down diagonal dash that ends in the air before landing on the ground. What this does is it conserves horizontal speed and then it adds a boost when you touch the ground. So whatever speed you had before dashing won't be lost. And when you land, your speed gets multiplied by 1.2. And in Celeste, there's no speed cap can continue this process, provided there's a platform further ahead that is lower in height. So you do need to be at least three and a half tiles above the ground before dashing diagonally down. Okay, what's really hard though, is that you cannot buffer the jump. You need to wait at least one frame before jumping after you've touched the ground or all of your speed will be lost. Okay, now technically there is a slight chance that your buffer jump will work, but it's only like 
two or three and eight. And if you're trying to chain those, uh, it's just not gonna work out. Some funny things happen when you combine ultras and moving blocks. So as we've talked about, jumping, dashing, or hypering from a moving block grants a speed boost. But you can actually get this block boost thrice if you hyper, followed immediately by an ultra. When you perform a wave dash or a hyper, you can actually notice these small speed rings that appear by her feet. You'll know if you've done an ultra correctly if those do not appear. Now here's a couple of common ultra setups you'll see. The moving block, the bluebird, the pufferfish, and the zip mover. Now there is still more tech to learn, like super waves, which combine a midair super and reverse wave dash, but that's restricted to grandmaster lobbies and well, we're not there yet. So let's go play some levels. Atmosphere for Deep Blue is perfect. The lighting effects are superb. If this released in Spring Club 2020, this would have been placed in the advanced lobby. The community has definitely gotten better. You'll have to go into the vents. <laughs> I'm in. Dash this map. Or not, I... Well, that might be the coolest thing I've ever seen. Lasers, traps, slow motion. We've made, what, three laps around this room to touch all the door switches? interact with Kevin's kind of messes with my head. That's wild. Uh, 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 it's a 
decoration is gorgeous. This is quite the juggling act. I gotta throw the crystals at the red barriers to break them. about all these maps is that they feel cool regardless of the difficulty of the lobby. Some of the harder maps, you definitely want to make use of the watchtower so that you can get a preview of the screen. Let's take a look at the first screen of Electric Exuberance and plan our route. Once we step through the barrier, we'll extend it hyper and then immediately dash down diagonal to perform an ultra jump on that lower platform. Using the momentum from the ultra, we'll perform two chained wave dashes. After lining ourselves up at the edge of this small blue block, we'll dash straight up wall jump, several climb jumps to get to the top and collect the key. A small hop on this crumbling block will cause it to disappear faster, and then we'll perform a reverse extended hyper from this red pocket. After wall bouncing, we'll wave dash onto this small red block, immediately dash down diagonal, set up for the ultra on this lower platform. We have enough momentum that we can wall bounce on this red block and get around the spikes. We'll briefly touch the top of this red block to regain our dash, then dash straight up, which will activate the zip mover, and wall bounce off of it to clear this large barrier. After reaching the top of the yellow block, we'll simply dash straight across, fall, touch the ground to regain our dash, perform a hyper, into a wave dash. Then we'll wall bounce and wait for the green block to activate. We'll hold down to fast fall, then we'll perform a couple of hypers so that we reach the next key before the blue block activates. Home stretch, we'll perform an extended hyper, immediately dash down diagonal, set up for an ultra. Using the momentum from the ultra, we'll land on the small block and then begin our ascent upwards. that there's carvings of jellyfish. Oh, no shot! I'm on a skateboard! What is this nonsense? A skateboard! <laughs> the soundtrack is incredible. How can I continue to be surprised over and over?
This is so beautiful. New technology. We can stand on purple jellyfish. Having jellyfish you can stand on is such a natural extension of the game. It's almost surprising you didn't see it in vanilla. I never realized that neutral drops halt your horizontal momentum. Oh my word, we can midair super off of our throne jellyfish. See that? That's a helper spike. Let you know if you neutral too far up the wall. When you think about it, jellyfish are this game's Yoshis. But their greatest wish is just to see her to the end of the level. Is this mad lad mixing bubbles and portals? Yep, they're doing that. jumping off the same moving block that's following us. Yeah, I think some indie games would be proud to have that as their box art. This map rocks. I won, and it was advanced. I guess this level answers the age-old question of what if I made zip movers out of dream blocks? Saying that the momentum here is really satisfying, why does my brain jump right to Bill Nye? And now, great moments in momentum. Momentum. Watch.
the lobbies really are terrific. It's nice to have some downtime. That's cool looking. the subway? Nah, we'll just play on the tracks. Custom red and green signal icons, neon lit blocks, even inspirational posters on the wall. This map just sells the theme. And the reskin puffers are a lovely touch. I think I would place curved zip rails at the same rank as slopes. Awesome. Because manually moving these pillars isn't enough. Every time I dash, these golden blocks swap positions. Ah, feathers. Every keyboard player's favorite item. It's amazing how the visuals keep staying fresh between every level. this was a short level. I was having fun until that last screen it seemed so inconsistent, but it could be a piloting error. I like it already. Yeah, no thanks. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, I'm a sucker for any time-related mechanics. The blue stopwatch freezes everything except objects outlined with a blue aura. 
and this is me just realizing that everything in the map is color coded. Blue stopwatches, blue aura. You know, he's right about that, Jimmy. He certainly is, Lance. A gray stopwatch. These blocks are seen in the base game, and whenever you dash, they activate. Green ones are like a combination of the gray and blue watches. When I activate it, everything stops, and when I deactivate it, I'm invincible but can't move. Unbelievably cool. A note on all of the springs on this map, if you were to let the full arc finish, you'd slam right into spikes. But it will make you better at spring cancels, which just means quickly dashing in a different direction after you hit the spring. This is fine. satisfying berries ever. I really appreciate the pacing of each room, since you need such a diverse moveset. It throws in bunny hops, jumping off moving blocks for speed, vertical sections to climb, conservation of momentum with ultras. It's just really good variation in platforming.
there for a second. All right, these rooms are so creative. We have to go for the final berry. like we made the Mario 64 clock level, but in 2D. What's next, an airship? You're kidding me. Ooh. Clear pipes are reminiscent of dream blocks in that you can jump out of them, they refill your dash when you exit, and apparently you can also dream hyper out. Propellers. The red ones have three charges. And these yellow blocks have a single charge, but it appears throwing blocks in clear pipes resets their use. I think this map will be of great importance to us. Okay, and these propellers are also death. Good to know. At what point do we consider this Kaizo? Because I feel like we're creeping towards that, if not already there. Uh, hi. Somebody thought they were perfectly capable of playing while they had COVID. Okay, you got it? All right, we're gonna move ahead. Sorry to slow you down. Stop. No. No, up, up. It isn't that hard. Oh, come on. Wrong. No. No. <laughs> yeah, that room slapped me around. Wait, no Koopa boss? I've been chipped. skin springs except the vertical ones you can hold on to them and it's only when you let go do you get the bounce hi all 
already know I'm using Swashers for the song. I see the mighty Zote has made his grand appearance. See ya! That was a great berry. Probably the most beautiful level we've seen yet. happened there was indecent. This could be just pure jank or incredibly fun. Nah, I was wrong. It's both. We have a new color of dream block. Hold on now. It's a dream block that bounces you out. But here's the part that hurts my brain. You can still dream jump out of it. Oh, if you see spikes with a dark outline attached to dream blocks, that means you can safely go through them as long as you're in a dash animation. the hardest room I have ever completed. The input density is wild. Perfect spot for a picnic. I feel like a legend for just setting foot in the lobby. <laughs> Whoa. 
well, hello there. the Kevin wall bounce off of it grab the jellyfish I'm not sure on the terminology back boost down diag into an ultra hang on to the block that the Kevin can move by get back on the Kevin hyper bunny hop off of it grab the block then dash into the feather circle around the spiked block grab it to pull it out of the way for the Kevin hit the Kevin so it continues moving to the right drop down down diagonal into that Kevin land on top of it right until about here hyper bunny hop off of it get back on the original Kevin into an ultra. I know what I need to do. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. <laughs> My very first GM room clear. Feels good. <laughs> What's concerning me about this room is the jelly transport. I guess I have to neutral drop this jellyfish into this gap before it's destroyed by the barrier. And then of course I still need to ultra and make my way through. And then the Kevin will have to transport the jellyfish and deliver it right here. I might even need to do a grounded ultra. Again, terminology, I don't know yet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I've just started the Grandmaster Lobby, and honestly, I'm, I'm not really good enough yet. I've yet to complete my GM training arc in the gym, and going through that gym kind of sounds like a separate video. Now, I'd only been enjoying modded levels for two weeks prior to the release of Strawberry Jam, but this mod would have been worth the two and a half year wait. It's incredible. <laughs>